Hi, I'm Jack. I was inspired by a video by Alex the Comic Quarter. His video was just so good, and I went down that playlist, the comic book community's top 50 comic books. I hope you guys aren't expecting something like that, because let me tell you a secret. The entire time I've been collecting comic books, I've either been a child or in college. So don't expect any Marvel mystery comics coming out of my end. However, as you can see back here, I do, in fact, have some books, though not those books, but comic books. But first, that means I have to pick some out. Don't get me wrong, the collection's not bad, but I have been chronically working on the budget of someone who doesn't make enough to even pay taxes half the time. I'm talking lemonade stands, okay? The most money I ever made was selling a New Mutants 98. So you know where I'm coming from. Which of course means I need to take the books off the wall. So I did some rummaging and now I have a definitive top 50 that I'm going to show you guys. So the first is Avengers 152. First appearance of Black Talon. I was introduced to Marvel with these uh, Marvel encyclopedias of characters. So you might be like, Black Talon? What? Who, who even? He was in one of those books. You got Captain Carter number one. He could be a very important character coming up in the future of the MCU. We'll see. I hate specking on stuff like that. Marvel Spotlight 4, first appearance of the Darkhold. It is beat up, covers detached, but you know what, I got it for a good price, so. Next three are gonna be Spider-Man 55, that classic Gleason cover, and I've got the first, second, and third print of those. I've got them in Mylar, so that's why they're so reflective. Next, I've got Daredevil 111, the first appearance of this guy, Silver Samurai, later becomes a fairly big adversary for Wolverine. The Amazing Spider-Man 135, also a fairly beat up cover, but it is the third appearance of Punisher. People think it's the second, but Key Collector app informed me otherwise. Daredevil Chip Zdarsky, 2019-25. So this is the first appearance of Elektra as Daredevil. I've actually got two of these. I was just getting into comics when this came out. This was one that came out at the time and I thought, oh, someday. Someday I'll have one. So that's why I have two, is because young Jack, beginner Jack, would be proud of me. Next we got this special agent book from the 1950s. It was a giveaway made by the railroads to promote railroads. So that's awesome, I think. And it's such a cool cover. Have a look at that thing up close. Good colors on it and everything. Tales to Astonish, number 70. It's the first time that Namor was in the Tales to Astonish series, in the title. Strange Tales 125, classic Thing versus Namor cover. Strange Tales 138, which is the first appearance of Eternity, and that couples perfectly with Strange Tales 146, which is the first cover appearance of Eternity. So I'm really happy to have both of those. Next, we've got Avengers 69, nice. And that is the first appearance of the Grandmaster and Squadron Sinister in a cameo. So that's very cool. I love Squadron Sinister. You'll see that coming up soon. Fantastic Four Annual number four, first appearance of the Golden Age Human Torch in the Silver Age. There he is, the, the man himself. I spec potential for me, okay? There was, in fact, in the first Avenger, Captain America, my favorite Marvel movie, you can see him. Just like in Marvel's, you know Marvel, it's not in my, but you know what? This isn't in my top 50, but I'm gonna show you anyways. Okay, I found it, I found it. Marvel's by Alex Ross, drawn by Alex Ross, written by Kurt Busiek. He's in that little, little dome, and you can see that in the first Avengers movie, and, and uh, or the first Avenger, Captain America, the first Avenger movie. So I'm like, dude, if they don't bring him back, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing, because that's a, that is, a really cool idea. Venom Lethal Protector number one, 9.4 CGC created, direct edition. Kinda wanted the 9.8 on that. I tell you what, CGC has dropped my books, like corner crunched the books, they dropped them, so they all have the same bend. They've done that twice now. I think I have officially stopped submitting comics to CGC, however, we'll see. Depends on how good those turnaround times are. Next, I got New Avengers number 11, 
from 2005. First appearance of Ronin, 9.8. This was a bit of a spec buy for me for the uh, Hawkeye movie. If you watch the movie, you know what happened. The show. If you watch the show, you know what happened. All new Wolverine number two, which is first appearance of Gabby Kinney, as well as Bologna and all her sisters, all that stuff. She is probably one of my favorite Wolverines. Wolverine number three. Kind of want the black and white one too. We'll see what happens. Next, we got a threefer. And so this is The Amazing Spider Man 249, part five of Craven's Last Hunt in a 9.0. The Web of Spider Man 32, part four. Web of Spider Man 32, 31, excuse me. Only six comics in the series. And I would love to get all of them in 9.0. Only want them in 9.0. I don't want them in 9.2. I don't want them in newsstand. I just want them in graded 9.0, and that's it. Next, we got a really cool comic book that my mom bought me, which is Panic number eight, 1.5. What year was this out? 55, 1954, 1955. That is a cool cover. I love this thing. Read it. Panic, this is no magazine. This is humor in a varicose vein. And if you're close enough to read this silly, this tiny type, then you're close enough to buy it already. I've memorized it. I love this scene. It's very, it's like the most golden age, what some people call it the atomic age. Most golden age thing ever. It's like, buy me, buy me, extra, extra. It just, it fits. And then the back. Get the body you want with that guy when he was the peak, peak level of fitness, you know? That's pretty fun. This is Daredevil number 11, the third appearance of Echo in a 9.8. Devil number 10, volume 2 in a 9.8. Second appearance of Echo. So you might be like, oh, Jack, you've got the third and second appearance. Do you have the first appearance? No, I don't. I have Daredevil volume 2, number 5 in a 9.8. Death of Karen Page. This is the variant edition, which is a little more rare than the normal one. So that's very exciting. Also, I lied earlier, I do have the first appearance of Echo, and it is in 9.8 as well. Found this for a dollar at a garage sale, submitted it, it got the 9.8. Two week turnaround time from CBCS. Ugh. Unheard of, unheard of, I didn't even pay for it. They just got it back to me that fast. I have other books in CBCS right now. It's been over a year. That's absurd. I think I'm gonna have to do another video on turnaround times and grading because oh my god, how exhausting. Anyways, X Factor number five again because it's the first appearance of Apocalypse 9.6 and it is just, I mean, this is a gorgeous cover. It just always has been. It's got the, the original five and it's got the first appearance of the man, the myth, the legend, the biggest villain to face the X-Men ever. It's like a $15 book. Why? I, I have like 10 of these things simply because I just, it's so cheap. It's the first appearance of Apocalypse, guys. Apocalypse of all characters. That is the character. That's, that's the X-Men Thanos. Insane how cheap this is. Buy one. If you don't have one, buy one. What's holding you? Money? It's not much of it. It doesn't cost much of it. X-Men Red number one. This is the variant. I think it, let's see, it's cover six. So it is the Lee, Ji Hyung Lee cover. And I like this comic because I'm a fan of art. And I'm a collector of art and expensive art. And no other reason. Fantastic Four number 33, which is the first appearance of a Tuma. I'm hoping to someday collect all the Submariner villain appearances. Right now, Krang is Fantastic Four Annual number one, and that is the hardest one to get ever. So are the Golden Age. I'm not talking about Golden Age stuff. That's going to be way out of my range forever. We got Avengers number seven, which is a pretty nice book, If but look at that thing. It's got stamps. It's also incomplete, uh, but you know what? It's a cool book. It's the, se it's the seventh appearance of the Avengers. <laughs> seventh appearance of the Avengers. What could go wrong, man? We got Submariner 19, which is the first appearance of this guy on the cover, Stingray, one of the main villains of the Submariner. Then we got Submariner number five, 
One of the coolest books I own. I love this cover. This is one of the greatest covers I've ever seen, and it is the first appearance of Tiger Shark. Uh, we got X Men 126 in a nine or in an 8.5. This is not really a key, but it's important to me because my sister bought it for me for Christmas one year, and I sent it in to get graded for that reason. Came back 8.5, which is pretty nice. Uh, a little tidbit. In this issue, we learn that Wolverine's entire skeleton is covered in adamantium, and it's not just his claws. So, a pivotal piece of Wolverine trivia coming out of that book. Wolverine number eight, that classic, classic blue cover with Joe Fixit in a 9.4. Uh, I found this at a garage sale, also the same garage sale, actually, as I found my first appearance of Echo in, and I got this coming out of it, 9.4, gorgeous book. A must-have for Wolverine collectors, frankly. I mean, if you don't have Wolverine 8, you got it. You got to get it. For your ego, at least. Captain America 180, which is the first appearance of Steve Rogers as the Nomad. That's a pretty good one. I found that in my LCS back in Salida. Sent it in. Got a 9.0 on it. Death of the Viper. Madam Hydra becomes the new Viper. Krang Tamio. Cameo. I don't say cameo. Please don't hate me because I just said cameo. Oh yeah, buddy. Now we're in the big boys. Wolverine Limited Series number one. 6.5 newsstand. This book is heating up. This is the first key issue I ever bought myself at my LCS back where I grew up in Salida. So that's really fun. Came back really, really low in a 6.5. It is not a 6.5. It is like an 8.0. But we take what we get, I guess. Marvel Comics presents number 72 in a 9.8. That is a really cool cover. Just one of my favorite books of all time, and I'll tell you about it later when we get to my me tier comics. Now this is a stack of comics that I call my me tier. You've heard of A tier, you've heard of B tier, you've heard of me tier. These are books that basically only I would like. No one else will find them intriguing, but they're important to me, and in this video I'm gonna tell you why. First section, these are classic covers, so I'm going to show these to you. Uncanny X-Men number 18. Look at that gorgeous cover. The black and the white and the red. He sure looks like he's in a pickle. You're going to notice a bit of a theme with these next comics. We've got on the Wolverine 25, X-23 number 1, X-23 number, what is it, 12? Women of Marvel number one. Look at that fun cover. How cool is that? That's Gabby Kinney, and that's Laura Kinney, and the Honey Badger. What's his name? Steve or something? Just living it up there. I love to see that. And all new X-Men number 30. What a cool, cool cover. I'll tell you why those are important to me. Another day from the top seven. So we'll start with Dark Wolverine number 79. This is the zombie variant, and it is the first comic on eBay I ever had snaked out from under me. Someone came in in the last minute, outbid me by one dollar, and took my book. This is the first book, and so that's why I decided to get it back. Return of Wolverine number one. This is the first comic book I actually signed up for ahead of time when I saw it in the previews. I was so excited. I got to the LCS before it opened. I was waiting out so outside to get myself a copy. I don't know what I was expecting. Something like hundreds of people were gonna be there. It was Return of Wolverine 1. I mean, looking back on it, it's very silly, but it's an important book to me. This is the True Believers reprint of Marvel Comics Presents, number 72, 73, and 74, I believe. It is beat to hell because I've read it so many times. This is one of the first reprints I ever bought, and that kicked off my love for comic books. Um, and reading. I just love Barry Windsor Smith's art on that. How fantastic. Squadron Supreme number eight. Who, uh, who cares about this book? Well, I do because this is one of the first, I think it's the first comic book I ever bought. So this is really important to me um, simply because I found it in like a thrift store or something and I just, I, I needed to have it. And that's what kicked off my love for comic books. X-Men Legacy 262. This is the first comic book I ever had a crush on. Getting back to some slabs, we got Wolverine number 10, signed by Chris Claremont. 9.6, CBCS graded. My favorite slabbed book, Wolverine number 1, from 1988. 
This is a newsstand slabbed at 9.4, signed by Chris Claremont right at the top there. From the back, gorgeous, gorgeous book. I spent, I think, 200 bucks on that thing. That was a big one for me, a big purchase. Now we got all new X-Men number 40. This is the first book that I ever read. This is the first comic I ever read. This is the, I mean, it's still to this day my favorite. It's, it, I, I don't care about the condition of this thing whatsoever because look at it. Look how beat up that is. It's destroyed. But every time I read this, it just, it makes me happy. This is just peak Marvel right here. This is when we find out Bobby is gay, which is like the best scene ever. Uh, Angel and Laura Kinney have a kiss each other in this one for the first time. Um, it's just, it, nothing, there's, in the X-Men's world in, during this book, nothing is wrong. Everything is good. And they're just, they're just existing with each other as kids. And it is just, it's safe. I just dropped it on the floor. It's safe. It feels safe. It feels, it's important to me. Because this is the first book I ever read. And to this day, it's still my favorite. These last two books, to top that, maybe you have to be doozies. This one is Captain America 102. I had a poster of this in my room when I was growing up. So every time I see this, I feel like a kid. I have stared at this comic for hours and hours and hours of my life, just studying it and just staring at it while I'm falling asleep, while I'm waking up, when I get out of the shower, fuck it. It's just, it's always been there. And it is one of the most important things. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. And finally, for my most prized possession, This is Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. number seven. This was also a poster in my room as a kid. So like Captain America 102, I stared at this cover an endless amount of time. And it is a gorgeous Jim Steranko cover from 1968. It is Dolly inspired, of course. And it is easily my favorite cover of all comics. When I was growing up, I had some mental health issues. I was scared a lot. I was scared for my life at times. And I remember being in my room, utterly terrified of everything in the entire world, turning over and seeing this cover. I remember this very, very vividly and thinking, you know what? Look what he's going through right there. I'm not dealing with anything nearly that bad. And I would try and call my, I would, it would help me calm myself down when I'd see something else happen because I knew that my situation, which was all in my head, was not so big a deal compared to what's going on here. I mean, look, there's a skull, there's monsters and zombies and, or, or ghosts coming out of the floor. There's clocks, there's, there's ripping realities, it's dripping, and here's Nick Fury running from it all, trying to keep himself alive. And, and that's how I felt at the time. So this was a random comic book from 1968. Uh, impacted me in a very, very big and very important way. There you have it. Thank you guys for watching. This was a very fun video to shoot. Thank you to Alex the Comic Hoarder for giving me the idea, for um, basically saying, hey, anyone can make a video. Why don't show off your collection? And so that's what I've been doing. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about any of the books, let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to see what you guys think. Do you have any of these comics of your own? Just let me know. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.